What is going on guys, welcome back. In this video today, we're going to train a neural network to do handwritten digit recognition using PyTorch. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to train a convolutional neural network to classify handwritten digits using PyTorch today. And I already have two videos on this channel where I do the same thing with TensorFlow and Keras, and it's going to be interesting to see the differences between PyTorch and Keras, because in Keras, we basically pre-process the data, define the model, optimize the model, and then we just call a fit function and an evaluate function to train and test the model. Whereas in PyTorch, we need to do a lot more things manually. Uh, we need to take care of the gradients. We need to do the optimization steps manually. We need to call them. We don't have to do all of the mathematics ourselves, but we have to instruct the model to actually go through the individual training steps. And this is going to be quite interesting. This is the first PyTorch tutorial on this channel. And I think that the handwritten digit uh, recognition project is a very good introduction to PyTorch because it's sort of the hell world example of image classification in machine learning. So what we're going to do first is we're going to open up the command line and we're going to install three Python packages, namely Torch, Torch Vision and Matplotlib. And I think NumPy, of course, pip install Torch, Torch Vision and Matplotlib. And I think NumPy is automatically installed here as well. It should be part of the dependencies here. There you go. Uh, so we also need NumPy, but we're not going to explicitly import it. Um, and what we want to do first here now is we want to load a data set, we want to load the MNIST data set, the handwritten digits data set um, into our project. And we can do that directly from Torch Vision, and we can define a data loader quite uh, conveniently to load this data in batches and to uh, load it in, in customized ways. So we're going to start here by saying from Torch Vision, import data sets and from torch vision dot transforms we're going to import to tensor so to tensor can well, actually we don't want to call this to tensor can take image data and turn it into a tensor and a tensor is basically just an n-dimensional uh matrix so you don't have um a matrix is basically n times n. And if you have a three dimensional matrix, so to say, or a 20 dimensional matrix, it's basically just a tensor. Alright, so we have done the import. Now we're going to load the training data. So we're going to say train data equals data sets dot MNIST. And we're going to say that the root is going to be data then we're going to say that train is going to be equal to true. If train is false, it's going to load the test set. If it's true, it's going to load the train set. Um, and then we're going to say transform. So what kind of transformation do we want to do with the data? We want to turn it into a tensor. And then we want to say download equals true so that it downloads the MNIST data set. It doesn't just load it from a uh, local directory. It loads it from the internet. So it has to download it. And then I can just copy this here down below, test data, and we're going to set train to false, the rest stays the same. So this downloads the data as you can see, and then we can take a look at it, we can say train data, uh, you can see data set MNIST number of data points 60,000 root location data split train standard transform to tensor, we can do the same thing with the testing data, you will see that this only has 10,000. Uh, data points, we can also get the data itself. So train data dot data gives you the tensor with the data. Uh, we can also I think shape is the proper word here. We can see we have 60,000 images with 28 times 28 pixels, we don't have multiple channels, we only have grayscale images. So the activations are just um, yeah, are just in one channel, which is the lightness value, we don't have RGB or something like that. Um, and I think shape and size both works, right? So we can also use no, actually not. I mean, we can call size probably is that is that the case? Yeah. So calling size and using shape as an attribute is basically the same thing. Uh, and for the test data, you can see that's also the same thing. And we can also look at a target. So we can say train data dot target uh, or targets, plural, size, and then you can see that this just has 60,000 values. So basically, the image, 
we can say torch or train data targets. And you can see we just have the individual classes. So digits from zero to nine. Uh, so that is our data. Now we also want to load this data in batches, we want to process it in batches, we want to shuffle it, we want to do certain things when we load this into our model. And for this, we're going to define a data loader. And for this, we're going to import from torch utils data, we're going to import a data loader. And we're going to say here now that the loaders are going to be equal to a dictionary. And we're going to say here that we want to have a train loader, which is going to be a data loader that loads the train data, it's going to load the train data in a batch size of let's say 100 instances, it's going to shuffle the data. And it's going to do this with one worker. Uh, and then we're going to say here that we also want to have a actually we can copy this here. We want to have a test loader, and a test loader will load the test data. And the rest stays the same, actually. So let me just format this properly. Like this. There you go. So we have a train data loader and a test data loader. And this is what we're going to use to actually get the data into our model. So those are the two data loaders. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is the most important thing, we're going to define the model architecture, we're going to define our deep learning, uh, our neural network structure and architecture. And for this, we're going to import, first of all, torch.nnsnn, we're going to import torch.nn.functional as capital F, those are just conventions for aliases. And we're going to import torch dot optim as optim. So for the optimizer, and here now we're going to create a class called CNN. So neural network convolutional neural network, I think the convention or the default way to name a model is to call it net. I'm not sure about that. But I'm going to just call mine CNN. Uh, it's going to be a neural network module. So it's going to inherit from NN module. Uh, and we're going to define an init method here. It's going to take self as a parameter, and it's just going to call the super class constructor. So CNN self, and then again, wrong key, there you go init. And that basically just calls the constructor of the parent class. And here now we're going to define our architecture. And we're going to start here, I'm not going to go into the theory too much, I plan on doing some more theoretical stuff in the future as well. So explaining the different layer types, explaining convolution, explaining dropout layers, explaining everything that we're going to use here. For today, I just uh, will define the model architecture, and I'm going to use it. So we're going to start here with a convolutional layer conf one, uh, we're going to call this NN, or we're going to call this conf one, but it's going to be a convolutional 2d layer with the idea that we get one channel in 10 channels out, and the kernel size is going to be five. So that is that we're going to have a second layer, convolutional layer two is going to take 10 channels into it, it's going to output two channels, kernel size is going to be five again. And then we're going to have a con so a dropout layer after the second convolutional layer, we're going to call this drop. So conf to drop is going to be a drop out to D layer drop out as a general um, understand or for the general understanding here is a regularization layer, it randomly or based on a probability it randomly uh, ignores or deactivates certain nodes of the network certain, uh, certain neurons in the network, so that we don't always use all of them during training, but during testing, and during evaluation, the dropout is basically irrelevant. And the dropout also doesn't change the shape of the data. And then we're going to follow this up with a fully connected layer FC one, which in PyTorch is called a linear layer, this is basically the same thing as a dense layer in TensorFlow and Keras. We're going to say here 320 in and 50 out. And then we're going to say fully connected to is going to take uh, linear again, it's going to take 50 in and the important thing is the last layer needs to have 10 output neurons. Now you can define your own structure the way you want. 
But the important thing is we want to have 10 output neurons because we want to do a soft max function. So we want to have for each digit the probability that this is the correct digit and all of them need to add up to one. So that's the idea. This is our structure now and the forward function is going to define the activations. So uh, this is interesting compared to TensorFlow. In TensorFlow, you define the layers, you specify an activation function, stuff like that. Here now you have the structure of the neural network and then you need to call the activation functions uh, manually here in uh, the forward function or method. So I think this is lowercase x here usually. Um, and we're going to start here by saying that x, whatever x is, x is the data. We're going to call a relu function, a rectify linear unit activation function onto, and then we're going to use a max pooling function. So max pool 2d onto the output of the convolutional layer one given x and we're going to define here two as uh, I think this is the what is it called strite? I think that was uh, what is what this is called here, uh, the parameter. So we call the relu function, then what we do is we go ahead and we call it again on what on another max pooling function, max pool 2d convolutional layer two called on x. Uh, actually, before that, since we have the dropout layer here, we also need to call the dropout. So self dot conf, uh, conf to drop, we want to call the dropout function on the result of the convolutional layer, then on this, we call the max pooling on this, we call relu and here again, also two again, then we're out of the convolutional part, we want to reshape the data, we want to flatten the data for um, for the linear layer. So we want to have just all of it flat, not x times x or not n time n, but just flattened. And for this, we call the view function. So x view, x is going to be equal to x view. And then we're going to say negative 1, 320. And the idea is that we have 20 times 4 times 4, which is, um, I think 20 channels and through the convolutions we have now 4 times 4. And when you calculate this 20 times four times four, this is 320. This is what we have here. Uh, and we flatten this to 320 uh, neurons here. And this is what we do here, then we say x is again, f dot relu onto the fully connected layer output. Then what we do is we do another dropout here as a function. So drop out, we're going to drop out here. Uh, we're going to set training equal to self dot training, because the dropout layer and the dropout functions only trigger during training, not during evaluation. Uh, and then we're going to say self dot fully connected to is going to be the output here. And finally, we're not going to call relu, we're going to return here f dot soft max applied on to x, because this gives us the probability uh, for each individual digit. So that is our architecture. Now, to optimize and train, we're going to have to do things a little bit differently than with TensorFlow and Keras. In TensorFlow and Keras, you have the model architecture, you just get the data and you say fit, and you say evaluate. Here now we do things a little bit more manually, we're going to import torch, so torch itself. And we're going to say now, uh, and this is only relevant if you have a CUDA capable uh, GPU, if you have a GPU and Nvidia GPU that can do CUDA, if you have CUDA available, you can do all of this on a GPU to massively speed up the training. So what I'm going to say here now is I'm going to say torch dot device. And we're going to specify CUDA, if torch dot CUDA is or if torch dot CUDA is available. So if CUDA is available, it's going to use CUDA. Otherwise, it's going to use CPU, which is slower, of course. Uh, and then we're going to say model equals CNN, we're going to instantiate it, we're going to move it to the device. The idea is that if you use the GPU, you need to move everything there, you need to move the model there, you need to move all the tensors there. And then you can work on the GPU on CUDA on the CUDA device. So you need to move all of this to device to the same device. Uh, then we're going to say optimizer is going to be equal to optim dot atom just atom optimizer here, we're going to pass the model parameters. 
where's the auto completion when I need it parameters, there you go. Uh, and the learning rate, we're going to set here to 0 0.001. So not too, not too high. Um, then we're going to define a loss function. And the loss function that we want to use here with softmax with this type of architecture is going to be cross uh, or actually nn dot cross entropy loss like this. Um, and then we can define the training process. And this is, as I said, uh, this has to be done in a more manual way than with TensorFlow and Keras. We need to say here, define train epoch is going to be passed here for logging. And then we're going to say the model needs to be put into training mode. So this is also something interesting about PyTorch. When you use the model in some way, when you train it or when you evaluate it, you need to put it into that respective mode. This is important for stuff like batch normalization or dropout because certain things are only happening during training and not during evaluation. So you need to put the model into training mode and into evaluation mode, depending on what you're doing. Um, and what we're going to do now is we want to say for a batch underscore index, and then we're going to have a tuple of data and targets. So X and Y basically in enumerate. And now we're going to say loaders. We're going to load the training data. So we're going to iterate over the training data over the loader over the batches basically that we get with the loader. Remember, we have a batch size of 100 and it's shuffled. Um, for every batch, we get the batch index and we get data and target and we say data and target are going to be equal to data to device so that we have it on a GPU target to device so that we also have this at the GPU or on the GPU. And now what we're going to do is we're going to set the gradient of the optimizer to zero, we're going to say optimizer, zero grad, we're gonna uh, yeah, zero out all the uh, gradients for each batch before we do the back propagation. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say the output of the current model. So what the current model would predict given the data. So what do we have right now without being trained or with only being trained a little bit with the current state of training? What would you say is the correct class for this data that I'll show you here? Or since we have 100 instances, what are the 100 classes that you would predict here? Given that prediction, we're now going to calculate the loss and we're going to say the loss function will take the output that our model predicts and the actual target. So the actual true information here, uh, the actual true label, the true digit. Um, and now we're going to take that loss and we're going to backward it. So basically, this means we're going to back propagate it, we're going to store the gradients um, in the tensors. And with those gradients at the tensors, um, we're going to just optimize. So we're going to make an optimization step. So optimizer dot step. So again, we zero out the gradients, we make a prediction with a current model, we calculate the loss, we propagate it backwards, we do an optimization step for training. And we're going to say here just for logging, if the batch index modulo, let's say every 10, 10 is maybe how many are we going to use here for training, we're going to use uh, or actually, this is not epoch. So let's say 50, every 50, or let's go with 25, or 20. Come, let's go with 20. If batch index modulo 20 is equal to zero, then what we're going to do is we're going to say print. And here now I have uh, an F string. So train epoch is equal to epoch of course, in curly brackets. And then we're going to have this fancy uh, square brackets here. And here we're going to say again, batch index times length of the data. Uh, that is now what we print, then we want to have a uh, then want to have a slash and we want to have here the length of loaders train. So how many instances out of how many instances, uh, and we need to say data set here to get the actual data set. Um, and then we're going to say that here we want to say now he want to display basically the loss, or actually, 
let me see what I did here. This is a complicated string. I don't really remember how I came up with it. So we have the epoch, we have how many uh, of the instances or how many of the batches we have already um, handled, how many are there, there are in total. And then what we have here is we have um, formatted to 0. Point, or 0 0.0 f percent. Um, so yeah, basically, this is the percentage of how much we have done. Uh, and then we want to also have the loss. So we want to close this, we want to say backslash t for a tab. And then we want to display the loss and the loss is going to be rounded to 0.6 f uh, decimal places. Actually, I'm not sure if we need the f when we do an f string, or if this is something that we need only for formatting. Let's see. Um, yeah, of course, we need to we, we need to enter the calculation here. So we need to say uh, 100 as a float times batch index, and then divided by length of loaders train. So those are the batches. Uh, okay, I think this should work. And here we have now uh, the loss. So loss dot item. I think this should work, but maybe we need to actually say F I'm not sure about this. This is some basic Python stuff that I like to forget. Okay, so I think that is it. Let's go ahead now and uh, do I need to close something off? So I'm printing this. So I think I'm missing a bracket. Now it should work, right? There you go. Okay, so this is quite a long line. Again, we have the epoch, we have how many batches or how many instances out of how many instances total are processed already, then um, same thing with the batches here, how many percent of the batches, and then we have the loss itself. Uh, I'm sure we're going to get a buck here. Okay, so that is basically the training process. Let us go ahead now and define the testing function. So for this, we're going to say def test. And we don't need an epoch, obviously. What we're going to do here now is we're going to put the model first of all into evaluation mode. So model eval uh, is going to be the evaluation mode, then we're going to say test loss is going to be equal to zero correct is going to be equal to zero. And we're going to say with torch with torch dot no gradient. We're going to disable gradient calculation since we're doing inference or inference. Um, and we're not going to call backwards. So we're going to say now for data target in loaders test. for data and target in loaders test, we're going to say data target again is going to be equal to data to device target to device. So that we have it on the GPU. And then we're going to do the same thing output is going to be the prediction of the model given the data. And then we're going to say test underscore loss is going to be equal or we're going to add to it. So plus equal loss function and the loss when we get uh, when we compare the output and the target. And we're going to say item here to get it, and then we're going to say the prediction. So not necessarily uh, the activation values, but just which one has the max um, activation, we're going to say here output arc max is going to be the predicted class dimension equals one keep dimension equals uh, true. So this is the prediction. And correct is going to be increased by one. Uh, we do that by comparing the prediction. So prediction equals the target, but we need to have the target in the same shape in the same format as the prediction. So we're going to say as or view as and we're going to take the target and shape it in the same way that the prediction is shaped. So view as prediction. Um, and we're going to sum this up. And we're going to get this value. So basically meaning, okay, for 100 samples for the 100 uh, instances in the batch, 
we're going to compare if target and the predicted uh, class are the same. And we're going to sum up all the ones so all the trues, and we're going to add those to correct. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say here, test underscore loss is going to be divided by come on, it's going to be divided by the length of the loaders test data set. Uh, actually, I need to close this bracket here. And then we're going to print a string again, that will confuse me probably while I'm reading it to you. Uh, first of all, a backslash in so that we have a new line, we're going to say test set, we're going to say average loss is going to be equal to the test loss. And we're going to say a uh, point for f so that is the test loss, um, the average test loss, we're going to say the accuracy will be um, will be the correct classifications divided by the total uh, instances. So the length again of the loaders test and data set. So how many instances did we classify correctly? How many instances are there in total? Um, and this is just now this out of this. So we need to do the ac actual calculation for the accuracy. Uh, why is this in red now? Is this a problem? Ah, yeah, of course, because we need to close this bracket here. Uh, and we're going to display this in parentheses here. So we're going to say actually, that we want to divide 100 so 100 point again to have a float times correct divided by length of loaders test and uh, data set. So that is the division and here this whole thing we want to format it uh, to so basically a uh, point zero f and then we want to add percent in the end and a backslash n. All right, so I think I shouldn't have messed up this one. Um, and now in order to actually call all of this, and here we already have a problem line 21, I'm pretty sure that is what did we do here unmatched. Oh, okay, I got it. Uh, this is a quite, quite a stupid mistake. Of course, I'm using quotations here, single quotations and single quotations here as well. So of course, I need to not have the same type of quotation marks. This is stupid. So we need to change those here. Um, yeah, this works. And down here as, as well, we need to say here, since we're using single quotations at the outside, we need to use double quotations in here. The error message could be Yeah, maybe a little bit better. But yeah, it's my it's my problem. Uh, it's my mistake. Alright, so it works. Now, what we have to do next is we need to actually start the training. So we need to say here for epoch in and then we specify a range 1 to 11, which means 10 epochs because 11 is not included. We're going to train, we're going to pass the epoch and we're going to say test in the end. So this will hopefully start a training process, you can see here that this is epoch one, we always uh, get the loss and we get how many uh, instances we have uh, already uh, used for training here or how many batches and in instances. Uh, and you can see here that we also get the accuracy at the end of each epoch, we already have 91 here, 95 here, 96 here. Actually, I don't even need to cut the video because this is quite fast. And all of this is running on um, on my GPU. As far as I know, let's see if that's the case. Unless I made some mistake, this should be running on my Nvidia GPU. Uh, on the CPU, it's probably going to take much longer. So let me just see what my device is. There you go, we have 98% accuracy on the test set. This is very impressive. So yeah, we don't use the test set for uh, for training, we don't use it as a um, as, as something that is considered, we just track it to see how the performance changes. Um, but let's see the device should be CUDA, 
yeah, as you can see. So this is running on a GPU. On a CPU, it would take much longer. But you can see now 98%. And we can actually do an evaluation here. We can say import matplotlib.pyplot splt. And we can say model into evaluation mode, into inference mode. Uh, data and target that we're going to care about now is going to be test data zero. So the first instance, we're going to say data is data unsqueeze. Unsqueeze basically means uh, that we're adding a batch dimension so that we can enter it not as one data point, but as a list with one data point, uh, or as a collection, we're going to put this again to the device, or to the GPU onto the GPU. Um, and we're going to say output is going to be equal to model predict on this data, we're going to get the prediction which is going to be again, output arcmax um, dimension equals one, and then keep dimension, keep them equals true. We're going to get the item. So the actual prediction, and we're going to print f string here, prediction, and then we're going to say that the prediction is the prediction. And the image that we're going to display here is going to be equal to data squeeze. Now this is the opposite operation. So we unpack layers. So we unpack basically the image from the data and then we uh, squeeze out the channel dimension. So zero, zero, and then CPU. So we get it back to the CPU, we turn it into a NumPy uh, array so that we can display it easily with PLT im show image and the color map is going to be great. PLT show. And you can see prediction seven, and digit seven. And I think we can do the same thing with one, this is two. This is one. This is zero, there you go, you can see it can predict images. And of course, you can also load your own image, turn it into a numpy array and let the model predict it. So yeah, this is how you train a convolutional neural network to do handwritten digit recognition using PyTorch. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.